I thought it would be quite fitting to wear this shirt for this review, given that Razor have previously worked with Star Wars. Nevertheless, today we are concentrating on a non-Star Wars branded product, and it's the Leviathan V2 soundbar. It can be found for £250 in the UK and $250 in the US. So to kick off this review, I want to quickly touch upon the aesthetics and design of the soundbar, where subjectively I think it works pretty well, at least for sitting in front of a monitor. Here it has got small little feet which can be added to to the soundbar, it comes included within the box. You have got flat feet and then you have got ones which are slightly angled, which is the ones that I prefer using. Of course, you can remove the feet altogether if you'd prefer it to be running more of a flush setup on your desk. Now at the top of the soundbar, you do have some physical buttons, which are always a welcome sight and it gives you basic controls such as on and off, changing the input, and you've also got a volume rocker as well. Now, of course, being a Razer product, you do have RGB lights on it, which can be fully customized via the software or indeed via the app, which I'll showcase very shortly. But there's one thing I would like to highlight, and it's something that I noticed upon plugging it in and enabling the brightness at 100%, is that there was a small little whining noise. If you were to reduce the brightness, the whining noise decreases, and of course if you were disabling the RGB lights altogether, then the whining noise completely disappears. In fact, I did a little demo of it, I turned up my microphone to its maximum level input, and I placed it right next to the soundbar for you guys to hear. Now I think the issue is going to be noticeable for a lot of people, it's not overly loud but for me that who has got sensitive ears it was something I picked up on. Of course when I'm playing music or playing games it suddenly becomes a non-issue but in a quiet noise environment it did become a little bit well cumbersome to listen to. Now I can't really say that if this is a problem on all Razer Leviathan V2 units but the one I have received does have it and came directly from Razer so they might want to address it and it's just something I thought to do because I'm always transparent and honest with my reviews. Now next up we get onto connectivity and here I do want to raise a few concerns because Razer have gotten rid of the 3.5mm jack input and optical input from the Leviathan V1. Indeed here the Leviathan V2 is limited to Bluetooth and a USB input only. Here it's got a Type-C input and there's a Type-C to Type-A cable provided within the box. It will raise concern over here for certain individuals, although I do think the limited amount of inputs and even outputs that it has is going to be hindrance for some people who are, for example, console gamers. In other words, if you're running this with a TV setup, well, you're not going to be able to actually run it altogether because it doesn't have an HDMI nor an optical input. Likewise over here, there is no 3.5mm jack output for headphones, which I feel is a fantastic feature which I saw included in the Creative Katana V2, making it far more appealing for those people who are going to do late night gaming sessions and as such don't want to be bothering any of their neighbours or indeed any of the people that they're living with. So now we get onto software which is really comprehensive. Now if we click on the Leviathan V2, you'll be able to see an interface over here. First of all, you can choose between profiles, you can switch between stereo and THX spatial audio and I would very much suggest running on the stereo. You can adjust the volume or indeed disable it. Enable a center focus if you prefer it in terms of vocals although I do prefer to leave that disabled. And as for the audio equalizer you've got a few preset modes or you can of course go and custom. Here you can see a brief little look as to my own settings and of course that's going to be very much dependent on your own audio hearing profile and indeed your taste but this is what I found to result in the best sort of audio frequency. Now if we go on to lighting, here you can enable or disable the brightness, you can adjust the brightness level as well. You can also switch off the lighting when the display is off, which I think is a clever and useful integration. And then in terms of the quick effects, you've got a variety of different ones to choose from, or indeed you can go into the advanced effects via the Chroma Studio, and this opens a complete array of customization when it comes to your RGB lighting, which is absolutely fantastic. Personally, I don't really use RGB light, so I don't really care about it, but if I was going to do something, I'd probably go on the quick effects because it actually does a pretty good job. Now, elsewhere, you do also have the THX Spatial Audio software. Now, this is on a 15-day trial, so you have to purchase this as an additional option if you so wish to use it, but it is quite useful when you first get the soundbar and therefore if you want to go through certain setups or, for example, if you want to enable it via stereo 
Stereo or THX via certain apps they're using, for example, Windows Media Player. Now, here is worth bearing in mind that the Leviathan V2 is the first speaker that Razer produces that actually has the THX spatial audio natively baked in. Now, you do have the EQ controls, and it is worth bearing in mind over here is that it will overwrite the EQ that we just previously covered. So you might want to use this. For example, over here, you've got a variety of different levels, and the custom mode hasn't saved from my Razer software customization. So it depends on which one you want. And also the fact that over here, via the THX, app you do also have bass boost, sound normalization and voice clarity which if I'm not mistaken you don't actually have on the regular Razer software. The most important one at least in my opinion is the calibration. You can adjust the distance so to speak, the kind of virtual distance that the THX spatial audio produces and this can be quite useful depending on your own room's acoustics. Finally you do have a THX demo which is always very useful to give you an indication of how it's actually performing. Now aside from the software you do also have an app which does serve as a remote. Now having previously paired the Leviathan V2 via my smartphone and of course the app, it means that I can now switch it on from afar. And despite the fact that we're not running Bluetooth right now and running the USB input, it means that you can still control it as a remote. In other words, you can use your smartphone as a remote, which I think is a useful addition. I know some people would have preferred a physical remote, but given the target market over here, I've got no inherent complaints. Now, if we click over here, the remote control functions are pretty self-explanatory. You've got volume up and down, play and pause, previous and next, muting, and also the ability to switch inputs. Now, if we go on the Bluetooth input, you'll be able to see over here on the right that the EQ function shows up. Now this is again just not based on all sources. This means that it doesn't have a memory function and as a result means that the EQ is based on your Bluetooth source only. So I would suggest music out of all the other ones or of course you can set your own custom such as the one that you have on the software. Now if I were to go back I can just further re-emphasize the point over here. You can see equalizer set on music. If I click on input source and go on USB it says it's now disabled and because that is reading the EQ via the software. Now, now elsewhere you do have the ability to enable or disable the RG RGB colors and also have a basic functionality of how you can customize the RGB functions of the Leviathan V2, which I think is a great addition and allows for further customization from afar. I do applaud what Razer have done over here in this department. So with all of its features out of the way, let's get on to a sound demo, which I know is not going to be ideal over YouTube, but it'll give you a little bit of a taster. I'll be playing back my French track, which is from Priya J titled Falling, and I'll be cycling between the stereo and the THX spatial audio preset. Do check out the annotations down below to understand which mode it's currently running. Young should hide, then learn how to fly. It's the only way you know how to play this game. To success, I'm not quite sussed it yet. When I reach the brink, don't stop to think I always sing And now I'm Thing is my imagination is constantly racing A thousand miles ahead, I'm living in my own mind So with the audio demo out of the way that was running over the USB input and thus running 24-bit 48 I should mention the driver configuration here you have two front-facing tweeters which have got 0.75 inch in terms of size. You have got then two 2 inch forward-facing full range drivers and then you've also got two rear passive radiators. The combination means that you've got four drivers within the soundbar unit itself and of course the fifth is the subwoofer which is an external device which is passive and it's also got a downward firing 5.5 inch driver. Now with all of that in mind, it is also worth bearing in mind that the frequency response that Razer quotes goes from 45 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Now what does this combination actually yield to? Now in terms of my subjective opinion here, I will say that the sub bass tones can be heard and they're slightly felt depending in terms of the EQ presets you use, but it's no competition to the likes of the Creative Katana V2 due to its much bigger subwoofer unit and therefore gives you a little bit of extra rumble and that low end. Now this means that if you're watching movies or playing games, you might actually feel a little bit more engaged or enjoy that little bit of extra low end extension with some of its competitors, be it in terms of the Creative or of course other solutions out there on the market. Now on the plus side, the mid bass is really well done. It's punchy, it's precise, and it doesn't sound wobbly either. I just was felt really engaged when I was listening back to let's say Priya J's tracks or more complicated and 
tracks that are a little bit more baseline orientated, such as EDM, R&B, or DMB music, and here I did feel that the Razor Leviathan V2 really kept up in this department. Now what really took me by surprise was the overall mid-range accuracy and the forward nature. I was coming to the review expecting a quite V-shaped sound signature, and while it's not as forward sounding as the likes of the Sonos Ray or for example soundbar unit from Samsung, it still is very impressive, and I would say here it's one of its forte, specifically here when compared to the likes of the Creative. Now the soundbar unit does have a little bit of a dip in terms of the lower mids, and while you could EQ it, you might find that it does reduce the overall accuracy, but the upper mids extend really well, and they also can be EQ'd extremely well too. So as a result means that you get a real lifelike sound, and one that's quite exciting, be it if you're listening to, let's say, a podcast or a YouTube video, or of course if you're listening back to music, movies, or indeed gaming. And as for the highs, they extend extremely well at the top end, providing you that sort of toe-tapping and exciting feeling. But what is more important, more than anything that I've mentioned so far, is the overall soundstage. And of course, gamers will appreciate that sound cues are going to be very much paramount when it comes to using the soundbar. Now what I will say is that the overall width and depth can't quite compete with the likes of the Creative Katana V2, nor the likes of dedicated bookshelf speakers which will just provide far better airy sound. But when it comes to the overall instrument separation, and thus when it comes to positional cues, I had no complaints whatsoever. The way that the Leviathan V2 was able to position different enemy footsteps or spawns, or for example someone shooting at me, it allowed me to snap to people's heads, although my aiming could have been a little bit better when I was filming this review. Nonetheless, what I'm trying to say over here is that for gamers, I think you'll be left pretty impressed. Now I should note over here that I ran the setup with the stereo mode rather than the THX spatial audio. I found that when it came to gaming and or when I was listening back to music, it took away from the overall accuracy and gave you somewhat of a artificial and subdued experience. But on the flip side, when I was watching movies, I felt that this THX spatial audio provided a slightly better than heightened experience. So it really depends in terms of your preference and the fact that you do have the ability to switch it on or off, depending on the content that you're watching, is definitely appreciated. So with all of that in mind, it brings me on to my verdict. And quite frankly, the Leviathan V2 is not bad. It offers a good sort of sound signature. It's got great positional cues for gamers. It's got those fancy RGB lights can be customized to the nth degree has got EQ controls and a really responsive and great functionality in terms of its app. However, they have taken away the 3.5mm jack inputs and optical inputs, which might not be of concern to some people, but then it doesn't have the extra functionality of some of its competitors, whereby it's not got HDMI, nor does it have a 3.5mm jack output either. It also doesn't have a physical remote, which might be of concern to some people who don't want to use a smartphone. Ultimately, what I'm trying to portray over here is that there's some other alternatives that you should consider, and they'll be down in the description below for your consideration. Now, I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts of the Leviathan V2, and as to if you are going to be buying it, or if you're thinking about buying it, as to what you make of it. And also, if you like this independent detail review, definitely do drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. It really does help continue me delivering honest reviews like this one. And if you've done that already, I just want to give you a virtual high five. Anyway, I've been totally dubbed and I hope you see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.